On question 21, we are once again looking for critical numbers. In this case, notice our original function is a fraction, so we're going to have to use the quotient rule. So if I take the derivative of the top, I get just simply a 1 multiplied by the bottom, which is x plus 1, minus the derivative of my bottom here, which is 1, multiplied by the top, all divided by the bottom part squared. So if you go ahead and distribute that negative 1, you'll notice these x's cancel each other out. So we are left with a negative 5 over x plus 1 squared. Now, normally we say go ahead and set that derivative equal to 0 to find potential critical numbers, but a fraction is never going to equal 0 if the number on top doesn't have an x. So negative 5 will never be 0, so therefore your first derivative is never 0. We also have to consider where it is undefined, and so um, what we notice is that if you take the bottom part of this fraction and set it equal to 0, then x equal negative 1 makes it undefined. Now, if I set up my number line to consider that as a potential critical number, um, I chose to plug in negative 2 to the left-hand side. And again, make sure you're plugging it back into your first derivative. So that's what I did here. And I got a negative answer. And then I chose to plug in x equals 0. Again, plugging it into my first derivative here. And I also got a negative number. Now, keep in mind, critical numbers have to be in the domain of the original function. If I look back at this original function, you'll notice that when x is equal to negative 1, it makes that fraction undefined. So what we actually know when we study rational functions is that creates a vertical asymptote on that graph. So bottom line is negative 1 is not in the domain. So therefore, we say that there are no critical numbers here. We didn't find a value where it was equal to 0. And even though we found a value where it was undefined, it was not part of the original domain. OK, and so based on our number line test, we see that this graph is always decreasing. So when they ask me what intervals is it increasing on, I'm going to say that it is never increasing. And then when they ask me where is it decreasing, remember that if this is a vertical asymptote in the graph, there's basically there are no points um, when x is equal to negative 1. So I've got to describe it in two intervals. I have to say that from negative infinity to negative 1, the graph is decreasing. And then basically, you've got that vertical asymptote at negative 1, so the graph also decreases from negative 1 to positive infinity. So again, um, there is a vertical asymptote at x equal negative 1. We talked about continuity in the first half of the course, so we're saying the graph is not continuous at that point. All right, in question 22, we are looking for our local extrema. Again, this is based on um, critical values, which is involving a first derivative. So the first thing I did is I found my first derivative, which is here, and then I set it equal to 0 so I could solve it. Once again, I noticed everything was divisible by negative 3. So by coming in here and dividing everything by negative 3, it just gives me something that is much easier to factor because I'm left with this at this point. And when I factor that, I get factors of x minus 3 times x minus 1. Set those factors individually equal to 0, and my critical numbers end up being 3 and positive 1. So here's my number line graph down here with my 3 and my positive 1. Partition the graph. So I did test points, so something to the smaller than 1, I chose the x equals 0. Again, remember plugging into your first derivative. When I plug that in and evaluate it, I get a negative 9. So because it's negative, I know I've got decreasing here. In between the two, I plugged in x equal 2, again, to the first derivative, evaluated it. I got a positive 3. What really matters is just the fact that it's positive, so I know the graph is going up. And then finally, something bigger than 3, I plugged in x equal 4, 
evaluated it in my first derivative, and I got an answer of negative 9. So the graph is going down. Now, what we know is that when a graph changes from decreasing to increasing, like we've got right here, we call that a minimum. Whereas when a graph goes from increasing and then changes over to decreasing, that's when we have what we call the max. So for this particular graph, we've got a minimum value when x is equal to 1, and we have a maximum value when x is equal to 3. Now they're also wanting you to find that actual value. So if you take this x value of 1 and plug it back into the original function, that's what gives you the y value of that graph. So that's what I did here. And again, as long as you show me this first step where you've plugged it in, then you can just punch it into a calculator or do it by hand like I did there. So I got a y value of negative 5. And then when I took my x value of 3, and again plugged it back into this original function, that's what I did right here, and simplified it, I got a y value that was equal to negative 1.